See, assessing people's boxing speed is something that's very challenging to do if you're only looking at one person at a time. So watch this. We're going to go Evander Holyfield's 1-2 before Vitor Belfort. Mike Tyson's 1-2 right now. Jake Paul's 1-2 right now. And the difference is in the speed and the power. This is one of my favorite sequences in the history of Mike Tyson's career. Watch this. Two or three punches. I'm throwing him up punches and bunches. He goes. Oh, a 30% version of that guy destroys any YouTube boxer that has ever existed, including Jake Paul. So I set out to do a video about the statement that Mike Tyson put out about Jake Paul and then some, uh, some context. And after doing that, I found brand new footage of Mike Tyson training that is absolutely bananas. And so the first probably 10-ish minutes of this video is going to be the statement and the follow-up in explaining where the context is. And then after that, we're going to look at the new footage and then we're going to compare some insane footage. Evander Holyfield's 1-2 from before Vitor Belfort. Mike Tyson's 1-2 right now. Jake Paul's 1-2 right now. It is going to put things into context in a way that I don't think anything except your own eyeballs can do. So let's start with Mike Tyson's stone cold statement to Jake Paul, which should make him very afraid, but then we'll see the footage and that should make him way more afraid. I don't know what anyone can say about this. I want to know what Bisping and any of these guys who think that Mike Tyson is a huge underdog, I want to know what they say if they actually watch this video right here and compare this footage. Like, I, I don't understand how anyone could still think that Mike Tyson is an underdog. I think Tyson might knock him out in the first round, and I'm 100% serious about that. All right, so we got a long ways to go before the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight, but here, you know, here and there, you're going to get little things that need to be talked about. Mike Tyson put out a message to Jake Paul today that I'm going to show you, and I'm going to give you a, uh, a second layer to think about after you watch what he says right here. Sometimes on YouTube, you, you, catch, like, uh, you catch some momentum on a topic, and then you just kind of ride it because, whatever, the algorithm prioritizes you over other people. I'm telling you on the Mike Tyson thing, this is absolutely earned over a lifetime, lifetime of obsessive watching all of his content. And I'm going to show that to you right now because when he does this message right here, I'm going to take you back and show you a, like a, a whole montage that he did from a previous movie from about, I don't know, maybe like 15, 16, 17 years ago where he talks about this exact thing. It is one of my favorite clips of all time of any fighter ever. It get, I just watched it before I started this and it gave me like, it gave me goosebumps again, like it does every single time I watch it. But again, and, and here's the other thing I want to talk about today. I want to talk about uh, the difference between Mike Tyson now and Evander Holyfield before Vitor Belfort. And I'm going to show you footage of Evander Holyfield training right before that Vitor Belfort fight so you can compare the two because I actually hadn't done that. It is shocking how different it is. Like you're talking, if 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 you had the the one of the athletic boards just look at, like just take age out of it and you, they showed, you know, Mike Tyson training right now against Evander Holyfield training right before the, the Vitor fight, they'd be like, we're not sanctioning this fight, dude. That guy is going to get killed. This dude's going to kill that guy. So uh, buckle up. That's what we're going to do. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I love you guys. Thank you for the in continuing support. And uh, I may as well just thank the sponsor of this video right now. Yo, Kratom. Best source of Kratom on the internet. If you are someone who buys in bulk, $60 kilograms, you will never find a better, more reliable company. Yo, Kratom.com. Give them a look. All right, so let's jump into this thing. Oh, by the way, throw a like on this video if you want to support the channel and you like my content. I would appreciate it very much. So as a preface, I'm going to say this over and over and over between now and July. The biggest question to ask is, how serious is Mike Tyson taking this? And I'll tell you exactly why. Because at the end of Mike Tyson's career, right? Well, let me rewind. Mike Tyson in training looks incredibly fast and i'm talking look at him look at jake like i'm not throwing rocks at jake paul's skills jake paul is excellent for the amount of time that he has been that he has been competing but when you look at mike tyson training mike tyson looks incredible bottom line he looks fast he looks powerful he looks like his his skills are all still there if he is doing a full camp and he is taking this as seriously as he took like a, a prize fight way back in the day he is going to be in incredible shape and he's going to be a nightmare he is definitely going to have the hormones of a 21-year-old coursing through his body this entire pre-fight. So that said, you got to understand that he does not need the money. As we talk about every single time that we do this, okay, Mike Tyson does not need the money. He's making millions of dollars a month on his vape company, okay? So he is doing this for only one reason, and that is because he wants to get back in there. He wants to fight. So with that said, here's a quote that he put out uh, in part of his interview today, that, and I'm going to show you this quote, and then I'm going to show you 
a montage from before where, like I said, it addresses exactly what he says right here, and then we're going to discuss it, then we're gonna look at some highlights. I don't think I'll be smoking for this fight, and I think I'm gonna be really, really irritable and nasty. And this guy's gonna come, he's gonna try to hurt me, he's gonna be greatly mistaken. I don't think he's faster than me. Whatever I'm afraid to do, I do it. Like right now, I'm, fr I'm scared to death. But as the fight gets closer, the less nervous I become because it's reality. And in reality, I'm invincible. I don't think I'll be smoking for okay. this fight. And I think so that right there probably, probably sounds like gibberish to people who have not followed Mike Tyson's career very, very closely. Let me put some context to that right now, okay? So this is a montage that's from uh, one of the documentaries about Tyson. Obviously, I've seen all of them like 100 I times. I am... You know, listen, dude, I I don't think you're going to be able to find a person who is a bigger fan of anyone than I have been of Mike Tyson my entire life. So with that said, I've seen every single piece of content that he's ever put out. Now, check this out. And this is going to put very clear context to exactly what he just said about being scared. As soon as I come into the ring, as soon as I come into the ring, I'm gloved. No, stop it. That's not true. While I'm in the dressing room, Five minutes before I come out, my gloves are laced up. I'm breaking my gloves down. I'm, bro I'm pushing the lever at the back of my gloves. I'm breaking the middle of the gloves for my knuckle could pierce through the leather. I feel my knuckle piercing against the tight leather gloves on the Everlast boxing glove. When I come out, I have supreme confidence, but I'm scared to death. I'm totally afraid. I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid of losing. I'm afraid of being humiliated, but I'm totally confident. The closer I get to the ring, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. The closer, the more confidence I get. All during my training, I've been afraid of this man. I thought this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me, but that was, but I always stayed afraid of him. But the closer I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one could beat me. I walk around the ring, but I never, I never take my eyes off my opponent. I keep my eyes on him, even if he's ready and pumped and he can't wait to get his hands on me as well. I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom, and one of his eyes may move, and then I know I have him. Then when he comes to the center of the ring, he still looks at me with his piercing look and as if he's not afraid, but he already made that mistake when he when he looked down for that one-tenth of a second, I know I had him. He'll fight hard for the first two or three rounds, but I know I already broke his spirit. During the fight, I'm supremely confident. I'm moving my head, he's throwing punches. I'm making a miss and I'm countering. I'm hitting him to the body, I'm punching him real hard. And I'm punching, when I'm punching him, I know he's not able to take my punches. One, two, three punches, I'm throwing him punches and bunches. He goes down, he's out. I'm victorious. Mike Tyson, greatest fighter that ever lived. Dude. Jesus, man. We're watching Michael Spinks fight also in this video. I just decided that right now. So here's the thing. Okay, so I, I have a more holistic view of Mike Tyson's career because I was so heavy on Mike Tyson. I've watched all the documentaries and the way that I analyze like data in general is always through the viewpoint of trying to analyze the person. You know, like when a, when a guy is coming into a fight uh, in the UFC now, one of the main things that I analyze, is I'm like, where's this guy's mental at? You know, if the guy's in his, like, like Chris Weidman, perfect example, going into that last fight. Everybody's mad that he got the eye pokes. I'm not saying that's a good thing, bad thing, whatever. I mean, it's obviously a bad thing. But the reason why I give him credit for it is because he was 39 years old and given the circumstances, dude, he, if he loses that fight, he's done. He knows that. His back is against the wall, and if he loses, it's oblivion. And he came out, and he had an incredible performance minus the eye pokes. And so I give him credit because I know what that, what that crushing anxiety has to be underneath knowing that you're fighting for your life and, like, uh, you know, to extend this dream that you're in. With Mike Tyson, okay, there was, there are very, like, small pockets you know, once once Custom Auto died, where he was still laser focused on performing at a high level, like it, it continued for a little while, and then he kind of lost himself. He became the most famous guy in the world. He got Robin Givens. He's got hundreds of millions of dollars. Everyone wants a piece of him, and he's partying, dude. He goes into the Buster Douglas fight, the first fight that he lost, having done cocaine for two straight weeks and having sex with prostitutes. Like that's all he did. He didn't train nothing. He was like could barely move around. He was so hungover, and he goes and gets starts. Like that's a perfect illustration of like where he was at throughout his career. Okay. But that is still pre-jail. He comes out of jail. He has no good influences in his life. And he still does very well. 
But like going into these big fights, right? He's not sober, laser focused on his career. There were none of those. Like those fights were not that way. Even the Lennox Lewis fight. I remember going to the Lennox Lewis fight and this was when I was, you know, I think I was like 20 or something. So I was like old enough to where I was like really fired up for that fight. You know, like the Tyson versus Lennox Lewis fight was huge. And they showed a, they showed footage of him walking around in Cuba and he looked like he was, he looked like he ate Mike Tyson. I was like, oh my God, he looked so bad, dude. I was like, fuck, it was 30 days out from the fight. And I knew, I knew he was going to lose, dude. Because if he's walking around in Cuba, overweight like that, and like the guy battled depression back then, everyone was taking shit from him and he wasn't focused. What I'm saying is like, this version of Mike Tyson, who you are looking at in the, like in these training, like this is a different person than the end of his career even back then. And it's a long time ago, but now you have this totally different deal where he really is laser focused. He's focused the way that he was when he was young. The only chance that Jake has is if Mike is slow, hittable, and has no chin. And the only thing you're basing that on is Evander Holyfield. And I'm going to show you footage of Evander Holyfield training right now. And so you could compare that to training footage that we'll look at again of Mike Tyson training. Like compare these two things. All right, so let's rock and roll. And let's go ahead and look at the Evander Holyfield footage first. And then we're going to look at some new Tyson footage and then some other, uh, some other training footage. Look at it. This is Evander Holyfield when he was training for the Vitor Belfort fight. Now tell me what you would have thought if you saw this and you're like, oh, he's 58 years old and he's fighting any Jake Paul even. Watch the speed. Look at that. Okay, look at that speed, okay? Now, here is a new clip of Tyson, and they're working on a very specific technique. Quick note, while I was recording this, a new set of footage came out, which is the one that I was referencing before. So this is not the new footage I'm talking about. The new footage will be in a few minutes. That It literally came out while I was recording this, and it is absolutely mind-blowing. So watch this first, then we'll do the comparison, and then we'll get to that one. Watch this, okay, by comparison. Double jab. Go over. Pa, pa, pa. Double jab. Squeeze. Cross the... Double jab, distance. Is that what? I mean, distance. Oh. Again, and then let's go back to this one. So we're we're looking at the same things, okay? You're telling me Jake Paul's going to eat that? You're telling me Jake Paul's going to eat that shot? See, assessing people's boxing speed is something that's very challenging to do if you're only looking at one person at a time. So watch this. We're going to go Evander Holyfield's 1-2 before Vitor Belfort. Mike Tyson's 1-2 right now. Jake Paul's 1-2 right now. And the difference is in the speed and the power. I would love to hear what people are going to say about that after watching that. What could you possibly say? There is no question who the fastest is. And Jake is fast, dude. Mike Tyson's faster. And Mike Tyson's shots are going to put you into another dimension. Now, Jake Paul obviously has knockout power in his cross. But when you're also watching this next sequence, which is Mike Tyson new training footage, look at how elusive he is. When is Jake going to land a strong two on Tyson. Look at how he moves. This new footage is his best yet. It's going to continue to be like this for the next three and a half months. Watch this. Look at that speed and power and look at how elusive he is. Oh, yeah. I just don't know what to say about that other than I don't know what everybody's looking at. I feel like people are just looking at his age and they're like, yeah, you know, he's going to get worked and they don't realize who this guy is and the fact that he is this motivated training every single day as if it was the fight of his career. I mean, it's, I cannot wait, dude. I am so fired up for this fight. Now, let's watch 
Tyson in his prime, Tyson versus Spinks. This was not only, uh, you know, pretty much, I mean, this is after Custom Auto, obviously, but Michael Spinks was the lineal heavyweight champion, and uh, Mike, and I'm sorry, uh, Don King paid him $10 million to come out of retirement to fight Tyson, and uh, Spinks was utterly terrified. Mike Tyson had to rewrap his hands. He punched a hole through, through the wall because Spinks' team made him rewrap his hands because they didn't get to watch him rap, and... Uh, so Spinks was already terrified going in, and then he was really terrified. So we're going to watch this, and just like, you tell me what heavyweight boxer, like show me like footage of a heavyweight boxer in their prime that looks like they would have been a, a real solid matchup against Tyson. Watch how he moves. He moves like a lightweight, dude. He is, except with the most nuclear power of any heavyweight ever. Now we got to do it without the sound for copyright reasons. I don't really know what the story is, but let's do this thing. All right. See his head. It's like, see, it's like his counters. Like, he, this is even actually like he's kind of he's not afraid of Spinks at all in this fight. You could tell. You could tell he's not he's not afraid of him at all. Because in other fights, like you know, he's much more like this. Even like he has no respect because Spinks didn't have any power, dude. Like there, like, Spinks couldn't really like threaten him at all. Spinks is undefeated, by the way. Spinks was an undefeated. You know, he was technically a light heavyweight champion for most of his career, and then he went up and he won the heavyweight title. Then he retired. So, like, the idea that this was, you know, I mean, he didn't have much of a shot in this fight, but it was a fast uh, one-round knockout. Oh. This actually isn't even a good example. Oh. This isn't even a good example of Mike Tyson's best boxing, to be honest. He's like, because this is just him, like, let me go out and just destroy this, uh, this punching bag. You know, maybe, actually, we'll watch another one after this. This is it right here. And good night. That's a wrap. Thanks for coming out, Michael Spinks. That was an undefeated lineal heavyweight champion right there. And that's how he did him, dude. Okay. An undefeated heavyweight champion. Okay. Like, that's, I just don't think people understand, like, what the level that you're talking about where Mike was this dominant, you know? So, this one is uh, Michael Johnson, and uh, this is also, this is when Tyson was really young, dude. And, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe we get to, we could watch some of this build up, dude. Let's do it. Watch this. <sighs> yes, please. Oh, my God, dude. This is like this. This is prime Tyson right here. Just six months into his pro career, the word of a heavy-handed teenage dynamo was spreading throughout boxing circles in America, making it difficult for Mike Tyson to find any sparring partners to help prepare for his turbulent advancement through the pro ranks. I've had guys walk right out. I had one guy walk right out. That was it. Boom, boom. He didn't even work to get paid. Some of them say, well, this ain't for me. And they go. Or they don't come back, you know? They say, I'll call you, and they never call. We call them, and they got to work, they got a job, they got this or they got that. However, some were brave enough to help this young lion with his progression. Look at James that. Broad, Mike Jameson, Ken Lacusta, and Anthony Davis were a few documented fighters that, thanks to the Catskill Gym Register, we now know were durable enough to withstand daily sparring sessions with Kid Dynamite. You don't get anything without working for it, and sweating for it, and sometimes bleeding for it. And bleed for it they did, particularly with the head guards off, as Mike Tyson's eighth professional opponent, Michael Jack Johnson, found out not long after the bell sounded during their night. If you guys know Tyson knockouts, you already know what this one is. This one is brutal. 1985 clash in Atlantic City. Johnson, coming off back-to-back -back knockout defeats, looked Thank you, BLTV Classic. Unlikely to stop the current streak of Mike Tyson, who is trying to improve to 8-0 with 8 KOs. Jack Johnson. Yeah. Round number one, this is one of the six, most but hold on to your hats. Nobody ever, thinks it's going to go that far. Up, well, oh, there he goes. He's just going to pull his way in. Those rights to the body. Left jab, oh. right to the heart. Quickly want to point out. I'm just going to pause real quick and just say this. If you've ever wondered what would happen to a human being if they stood still and you let a prime Mike Tyson wind up like you were playing the punching bag game and punch them as absolutely hard as he possibly could, you're about to find out right here. First fight for Michael Jack Johnson in two years. Look at that, dude. Look at that. The left hook. 
just buried him, dug him in the ribs. I think it was a Excuse me. left and a right. And and Excuse me. Goodbye. A perfect weaving Boom. technique straight from the gym aided Tyson in scoring the first knockdown of the fight with a left hook to the body. To Johnson's credit, he so made it bad. back to his feet, but his inability to defend himself was always going to spell disaster. That left hook just caught him and sent him right to the so 23 pound weight oh, advantage. Oh, and he put it all there. The right to the head. <laughs> The lowered guard of Johnson allowed Tyson to connect with a brutal, wide-open overhand right, oh. fracturing Johnson's jaw and knocking out his two front teeth. He's still hurting. That jaw might be broken. Oh, yeah. That jaw may very well be broken. Tyson, thrilled with his night's work, sent a chilling... Yeah. So, that's who Jake Paul's fighting right there. That is who Jake Paul's fighting right there. You know? So, anyway... I am so excited for this fight. I cannot even tell you, man. I can't wait. Love you guys. Bye.